sweet transition, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Drupal Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt, as always. Today I wanted to do a short video on how I go about making my own binding. It sounds like something that's kind of simple and like, dude, I can just buy those online. And I'm sure many of you guys are probably even making your own binding. For years and years, I was buying my maple binding or my koa binding either from Stumac or LMI. The average price on like a maple piece of binding is like five to six dollars per strip. And if you're going to bind the body and the fretboard and the headstock, you're looking at like 30 to 40 dollars worth of binding and so that adds up pretty quickly and the other thing is is like you're kind of stuck with their dimensions uh, it was probably like two years ago with my drum sander that I was like man I should make my own binding I found out that like I can get on eBay or on some 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 websites um, curlymaple.com and I could buy a piece of wood like this for $40 and I've already made probably 40 pieces of binding out of this and I'll probably get at least a hundred more pieces of binding out of this if not more if you have a drum sander this is the process that you would use to make your own binding so what we're gonna do is run over to the bandsaw slice this up I'll show you my thought process as we go through that all right so I grabbed a piece of binding that I have here. These are kind of like, this is actually a piece of binding that I made from this piece of wood a little while ago. It has been just kind of like stealing the dimensions from my original Stumac binding that I had. So what we have here is a piece of binding that is two and a quarter millimeters thick by 7.3 millimeter, millimeters tall. And so what I do is I kind of just come over to the bandsaw and I'm gonna do my thickness first. And we're gonna set this bad boy up. Is there a reason you do the thickness first? Or well, is it just preference. It's kind of just my preference. You're gonna end up with because it's a band saw instead of a table saw. You're gonna end up with some tear out and stuff, so it's gonna be some slop to it. And so I'd rather have slop in this direction. Um, it's easier for me to get rid of. Um, with that said, you could do all of the processes that we're talking about here with a table saw. You just have to be a lot more careful because of the thin kerf. You definitely need to be using a, um, a zero clearance insert on your table saw. All of this translates over to that. So if I'm looking for a like two and a quarter thickness, I'm probably gonna cut these guys at four millimeters instead of two and a quarter. Um, that way we have enough material to remove with the drum sander to get it down to that final thickness. So we'll fire this thing up, rip this thing up. This piece of wood, by the way, is um, 36 inches long. I typically need um, 30 inches to 32 inches in length. And I do apologize for switching back and forth from metric to imperial. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to use like metric for like sub three inches and then go over to imperial for anything longer than that. So I apologize. We're gonna piss off both Americans and everybody else. <laughs> cool, so everybody. All right, here we go. Can you pop that blast? Oh, I got it. I got it. We don't, Matt doesn't like to work too hard. So. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna do four of these right now. And then we're gonna slice the, but I don't know if you can see Matt. See, you do get these tear out sections mm -hmm. um, just from the sloppiness of this bandsaw. Um, so I want to make sure that I leave enough material on here that I can sand that stuff off. Right. I just, I took off not even an inch worth of, um, or 24 millimeters <laughs> worth of wood. So this, this one piece of wood that I spent $40 on like two years ago, is, it's going to last me for years and years for my binding. The other upside to making your own binding is that it's all going to match. Every piece of binding you do is going to be exact match of the next. And the other thing that I tend to do because I do these arm bevels is I can actually make veneer out of the same, same wood um, with my drum sander. And so when I do a, a um, binding to it, a bevel that my woods are exact match. Okay, so that was the thickness. Now let's do the height. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna just take my binding and I'm just, I'm not measuring here. I'm just making it taller. I'm making it probably 20% taller than the actual finished product is gonna be. I think I can get away with stacking all four of these. No, we'll do two at a time. We'll do three at a time. Ride the lightning. Ride the lightning. Same deal. Come over here. What we have is just in a matter of minutes here. A lot of times I will do a batch, like I'll take like a, an afternoon, a lazy afternoon and just make like 50 of these. But just for this video purposes, we're just gonna do a little less. So what do we have here? Six, 
So we're doing eight, eight pieces of binding out of this little, little strip. And I also have these thinner ones that if I want to, I could make them into just not as tall pieces of binding um, for using for headstock overlays and other smaller trim pieces. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. You know, I've got this really nice piece of figured maple and it's really coming out on here. So what we'll do now is we'll run over to the um, drum sander and try to get it sorted. I don't know if you can see this, Matt, there's a big chip missing out of here. Um, that, and that's mm -hmm. something that happens. So once again, if I'm careful on the drum sander, I'll be able to remove that because I've left enough extra material on here um, that we can actually still get away with that. Um, if not, throw it out. You just, you know, you're gonna have some pieces that don't come out perfect. Okay, old trusty drum sander. Somebody asked me in the last video, what, what am I using for um, sandpaper on here? And so uh, this is a hundred grit. Matt and I have been, we had what, a 60 grit on here for some real aggressive cuts. And then we had uh, 120 and we finding that like hundred grit is like perfect for it's fine. It's given me a, a, a clean enough final product that it doesn't leave a whole lot of final sanding left over. And it's aggressive enough that it doesn't clog. So we have a hundred grit on here. Once again, I'm going to grab my masterpiece of binding and just check where we're at. We're going to go we are going for 7.2 millimeters tall or 0.28 inches. But the beauty of this process, you can do it however size you want. You don't have to do it this size. So 7.2 millimeters. So we're gonna do the height first and we're gonna run this stuff, stack them up nice and even. And as these pieces run through, I'm just gonna keep my fingers on the side so that I make sure that I keep them perfectly perpendicular to the bed. So let's get her going. Okay, so we've got our height dialed in. This went down to 7.1. 7.1 is what I needed to go to in order to get rid of any sort of blowouts. Um, and because I'm cutting my binding channel to the binding, once again, it doesn't matter what dimensions I take it to because uh, I'm gonna cut to it. So now we're gonna do the, um, the thickness of it. We're gonna take it to two and a quarter millimeters is, the, is what the original binding is. Here. So let's see. I think you can get a good sense of that, right? Nice, beautiful figuring on this wood. Mm -hmm. um, we just made, in like less than probably eight minutes, just made ourselves a really nice set of binding. Um, the last step that I do on these is once I've got them, is I'll stack them real quick. You'll notice a lot of times when you buy your binding, this is how they're labeled too. So I'll stack these up real fast. Go like this. And then I'll take two different colored Sharpies and I just, I'll do like a line. It doesn't really matter what I do. So I'm gonna do a little green and a little black. And that's how I can identify these as they're all cut from the same piece of wood. So when I throw these inside the, the container that holds all my binding, I'll know like, oh, well these two pieces of binding will be perfect matches of one another. So let me wipe these down with some mineral spirit so I can show you. They're little, you know, they got little fuzzies around the edge, but these are ready to go. Show you what they look like. Here we go, you ready? Yep. For the reveal. But uh, yeah, I mean, come on. It was a quick little video, but I think it, it showed you guys a little useful skill. Maybe I'm just dumb. I didn't think about doing that until after I owned my drum sander for a couple of years. But I uh, hope you guys learned a little something in here. If you make your own binding and you do it differently, let me know. Once again, all of the skills that I showed you in here can be used on the table saw as well. Just be mindful that it's a little bit more sketchy with the, um, you need a zero clearance insert and it's gonna waste more material because of the curve of the blade. Yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the, hit the uh, notification bell. And uh, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks so much.